especially after four the game, when you guys go down 12 nothing, what was the message at that point? No, like, really, no, everyone kind of just like no, no like, speeches, what no message in it. That, it's that's pretty clear of what. Guess, yeah. Just execute. Don't make make big mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. So, like that was the biggest thing in that game is we didn't. I don't think we had a turnover. If I'm not mistaken. Safety. Yeah, the safety that was the sack. But you know what it is? He didn't throw it up. Right. He didn't fumble the ball. You know what I mean? Like, don't make a bad play a bad day. Like he just swallowed it. You know what I mean? So defense was playing well. So but I mean, when we first got it, they take on throw a pick eventually. He didn't throw one. You know what I mean? Like so, it's the overall big picture versus the negative things that man. <laughs> We've had some games. Like when we played Florida in 2021. It was penalties. Could have won a game, but we had too many penalties. Same type of game. game. Right, right. Or we gonna throw a pick before the half, or we gonna just something, man. So eliminate those, put us in a position to win. I have to go get better. Oh my god, <laughs> that was one of my most proudest games to coach because you had to find the answers. Like everybody in the stadium could have called those games, man. Like. They knew what we could do. They knew what we couldn't do. They knew what we had to do. So now what you going to do? You know what I mean? So that was a problem. But to see our guys, like, when I show when recruits come in, I show them that film of how we kept plugging at it, like the rep count to when the play started hitting. And showing, all right, they got an extra right here. Eventually that guy ain't going to want to tackle him. All right, we lost the block here, but eventually he's going to keep pushing him after the play and how it started to soften him up. Like almost like body blows toward the end of the game when they just got tired of tackling them. You know what I mean? So that was a like an old school soften them up, body blows. And then what? They threw a pick in the end. Zone. We didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. that no, like just how do you close and finish games? You always talk about Jordan, like the real value was just how smart he was. Yep. Like he would always check you guys in the right way. Yeah. Probably over ninety percent of the time. Like, DJ can't be expected to do that. So, like, what can DJ be expected to do to no. keep things at least moving in the right direction? The best thing we do is we build it toward whoever is that, is that the guy. So, for example, it's going to be built to whoever the person is, to what they can handle and what they can process. So, at one point, Jordan couldn't handle it. So, we didn't do it. We saw a lot more check to the sideline. Now, the communication is changing with the huddle communication. So that's different than what Jordan had because he had to handle it now, but now you got huddle communication where you can help him out. You know what I mean? So it's 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 gonna be tailored to the individual. If that makes sense, whether it be DJ, Brock, running, whoever it is. Like, okay, so for example, Trey Benson is not here. Raydale is not Trey. He's a different kind of back. Uh, uh, LT. You know LT, but LT is healthy now. You know what I mean? So the offense is gonna be tailored to whatever those guys can do. That's why we love the spring because it's based fundamental. Like, all right, what can we do and who are we? How much of the offense being better last year than 22 was because Jordan could just do whatever? Efficiency, no question. I mean, he had more free reign to just go operate. Um, big plays, we've always you know relied on the big play element. But no, nah, man, I mean, we gave Jordan. But I mean, it took him four years to get to that point where he had ultimate freedom. He didn't have ultimate freedom in 21. He didn't have ultimate freedom in the beginning of 22. I think about right about game seven, he was like, all right, man, you got it. Like, So now it becomes, when you come to the sideline, like, why you do that? Like, what did you see? Well, I thought this. Or like, It becomes more of a conversation than a, hey, do this. And you live with the result. And let me ask you about the huddle communication. Is that something you guys are going to do this year? And how much is that going to you? I think all the college football is going to dabble with it. I mean, to learn how we want to utilize it as an advantage. Um, with the communication, who you got mic'd up, how you operate. So, I mean, we're not going to change our process, but we're going to definitely use anything we use as an advantage to kind of create advantage with communication. Right, and then the two-minute warning as well, is that going to I don't think that affects it as much. It just gives you almost like an extra time. Yeah, right. you know, but um, I think the communication has been the big change. And the amount of games you play. So, for example, if you plan on being a playoff team, you're adding you know, three games possibly to the to the to the slate which you know every team in college football you get toward the end i mean there's a little bit of limping into those games <laughs> toward the end so we better do a good job you know we, we, we've done studies about managing players and injuries and you know, lower body injuries from grass to turf to to everything just to make sure they're playing their best toward the end of the season and that's what coach novell prides our program on playing our best 
when it's needed at the end of the season, at the end of games, just whenever it's called for. So even if you do tailor the offense around whoever's going to be the quarterback, even if that means lessening the playbook to a certain degree, is there a level of confidence that there's the caliber of talent and players that no matter what you guys have to run, you can execute what needs to be executed? Absolutely. We don't try to make it too complicated. It's just more of whatever that player does best, make sure we – put them in the best advantage that we can to showcase what they do best. Our job is to sit up there all night to make sure whatever we're doing doesn't look the same, can't be you know, called out to drop tendencies and things like that. But the player's job is to show up and be them. Now, the more they have an understanding of how we're trying to operate, the more you can put on them because they know the whys. So when you send a play in, why, why are we sending this play in to you? What are we thinking? Oh, yeah, from the week he said, if we send this shot in, it's because we think the week said they're going to be down when we get plus 35. Once they start speaking to you like that, that's when you start kind of unrailing, all right, just go now. And it's the closer we can get to that, the better. And if not, we got to do a good job of building in where we can build that into the strategy. Like, hey, as we're going out through the week, hey, hey, if I pull you over or if I bring this guy in, he's going to tell you, hey, coach is calling us to do this. Like, how do you communicate it? Oh, man. Give them keys, whether it be signs on the side, like, hey, every time we put this orange up, you know what we're trying to, like, oh, I got you. Like, I think the defense does a good job of it, too. So whatever we can do to make it simple for them, but also maximize them, we're going to try to, we're going to do it. I mean, it's not it's not as complicated as, oh, man, we're going to be able to run too many checks. No, we're going to run the checks. It's just how we're going to get them in and how we're going to get them communicated. Sometimes we had checks in where the, the Darius knew, hey, man, if the end's wide, tell the quarterback. You know, or, hey, if the three techniques loose, tell the quarterback. So it's still experience on the field as long as we get communicated. Do you like the whole headset thing? It used to just be like 10 coaches versus 10 coaches, but now there's two GAs, there's 30, there's 30 quality control guys breaking down the film. And there's there's no more surprise. There seems to be like no more real true strategy. And it feels like with the headset, there's even going to be less thinking and, and less you know, edge. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mind it just because – it forces you to be on point. You know what I mean? You can't, there's not too many gimmies anymore. Like, oh man, this guy's wide open. Cause you know, like, nah, man, people gonna be in position. Um, they don't know what's going on. Maybe too many surprises, you gotta go play. And it challenges your coaches to make go a little bit deeper than what you've been going before. So I take it as a challenge of, all right, let's be on point. Let's, let's, to involve more scout scout, to involve more, all of them, I mean, it's, <laughs> As they grow, as the as staffs grow, you got to be on point, you know, and, and I enjoy that challenge. Do you envision Darius Washington having a home? Or is Darius' value always going to be just. He does have a home. O line. <laughs> I mean, nah, he ain't got no choice. Nah, he's, 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 he's played a lot of football here. The benefit our guys have had is a consistent voice. I mean, pretty much everybody in the room has been with us. And then the new guys we come in have experience and they wanted to be here. So like Darius, Mo, Ra, like all those guys have had one voice, one deal, they understand the expectations. So I mean, it, it's light work for Darius now. I mean he can move wherever we need to it's not even a challenge anymore for him. It's just where do we need him to win games? Is it fair to say that you feel like Rob, Maurice, Jeremiah are pillars, foundational pieces? Well Jeremiah has become that. He had a lot of growing to do because he basically had an off season and then he was on the field. I have belief in his potential of what he can be because his work ethic and what I saw him doing improvement. I've been very excited about his improvement as we've gone forward this off season because of his focus improvement. Also, the relationship got better. The relationship got deeper. So now it's not just I'm at Florida State. I'm gonna do what you say because I'm at Florida State. It's not no. I truly believe in what we're doing. I trust you, Coach. I'm gonna do exactly. You know what I mean? It's a different change of. Hey, I'm going to come here and go play and handle my business and go get drafted. Now it's like it, the mindset changed with this relationship grows. But I, when you talk about pillars, Keandre Jones is in that. I mean, to come in and play that role like he did and still get a, you know, did a really good job. Maurice is, I mean, like, yes, yes, those guys are staples. I mean, it, it, they should be, though. I mean, they play a lot of football. They've been in every, every situation that can happen in college football, from good or bad, they've experienced there's nothing they've experienced. Big wins, big losses. Close wins, close losses. Injury, disappointment, highs, stuff that's never happened in college football before. Like they, like their their batting of an eye, is, and they still get treated like that. I, mean, I just text Maurice because he's supposed to be a treatment at a certain time. You know what I mean? Like they still have the same accountability deal, but nah, man, them guys are 
I'm spoiled with those guys. Any thought of Julian moving inside at all? Yeah, he's going. So he's going to take a lot of inside reps here to spring. But I mean, Julian could go out there and play it. But just more maximizing Julian to be able to showcase his ability more. He's a physical, go get it player. Get his feet in the ground. Get his hands on you. So I'm trying to more put him in position where he'll feel more comfortable to go get in there early and go contribute. Yeah, so you got Mo, Terrence Ferguson has done it, Richie has done it, Otto is training at it, and Ty Hilton is training at it. And Darius, of course, can go in at any time and play. Let's talk about Richie a little bit. Just how useful is it to get a guy that comes in and has played multiple positions in the college experience that he has already be able to be a Swiss Army knife if the, if the need arises? Richie has been phenomenal because of his impact on the younger guys when he got here. Like, he came in, I mean, he left, I mean, he was like, man, I'm going to go with threes. Man, I'm here as a two if you need me. And he's been leading by example. He didn't miss one tour duty. Didn't miss one off-season workout. I mean, he came in and had his mouth closed and just went to work and led by example. So the much as you can have that, it always picks up those younger guys that are like, okay, I got to be on point. So it creates that inner competition. Even though you still got relationship, you're still competing, but it creates it in an environment where it's not dog eat dog. It's it's you know iron shop and iron. Brotherhood is important in any position group, but especially in the offensive line, you know, having that camaraderie is really important to have success. So to see guys come in and be able to do that, and also just the returning leadership, just how are you? How are you liking the development of that this spring for this iteration? I mean, of the group? It takes time. I mean, brotherhood is just a word. The action of it is actually living it out when they're not in here and not giving speeches and things like that. So that takes time. Like we have, we have, we added, you know, two freshmen with Ty and Todd who are here now. We still got two more freshmen coming. We added uh, two transfer guys, and they're still learning. JB is on his second year. Keandre is on his second year. So they're still building that relationship with time spent with each other. But just because you walk in a room with a tight knit group don't mean automatically you're brothers. That just sounds good for, for, for the speech. But they're starting to put that time in outside of it. Like, you know, Maurice didn't go home for spring break. And guys are pairing up with each other. And like, hey, I'm going to stay here tonight. Or I'm going to go to his house for spring break. Or I'm gonna, hey, this weekend I'm going to go to his house. I'm going to go fishing with them today. Like, that takes an effort and it's got to be real. It's not just... We're in the same room, we're in the same locker room, so we brothers. I mean, as soon as you have a little bit of adversity, it'll break. So I think I enjoy, I like that they're trying to put the effort in and making it for real. With the offense overall, Mike made the comment that he felt like this was the fastest team that he's had. Mm -hmm. uh, since he's been at Florida State, you added Jalen Lucas. Obviously, Jalen Brown, Brown is a guy that can really sprint and get out over the top. Just, yep. do, do you agree with Mike's assessment that this is the fastest the team that yep. you've had that so was in a, That was in a... Uh, 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 an effort to make sure we did. We felt like we've always been good. We wanted to get faster. And um, and now those guys still got to come in and do it. You know, they still got to do it, but we needed to get more, we needed to get faster on offense. So that was a, a, a focused effort to get faster because we love big plays and we think we'd have some really, really big plays with some more speed on the field. Mike also said this is probably the strongest team you guys have had collectively. Yeah. Strongest, fastest. It's going to be really simple question, I guess. Maybe it's a little answer, maybe not. Like, why? Why, why is the team faster and stronger than it's ever been? Just time. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, recruiting becomes a part of it, but sometimes you recruit good players with high potential that's not very strong. So I think that, you know, over time, understanding the, the, the expectation, seeing the result of the work pay off, so more buy-in into the work, no more questioning, because when you first come in and you first bring new guys in, they do what you tell them to do, but they're still trying to wait to see the result. Of it. Now there's no more waiting to see the result because they've seen the results, so they know it works. So now there's an attacking the work instead of just doing the work. So I think that's what more the focus level is. And we got some experience. And if you look at the O-line, D-lines, linebackers, bigger bodies, Strong. I mean, I, I think it's just a combination of all of it, but and also just Josh Dorman. Man. I mean, that staff. People talk about consistency of the staff. The consistency of the strength staff with with, um, with DJ, with uh, Lanier, with Storms, with Dowdy. Like those guys are, have been together too in the same weight room with the same relationship with those players. So it's no more questioning the work or I'm just doing the work to check off the boxes. No, I'm attacking the work and I'm coming to him because I got a relationship with him to do more to individually get myself where I want to go instead of just following the sheet. Like, okay, this is the workout, this is what I'm going to do. Like, no, I trust coach. Coach, I did this. Now, individually, what can I do to get stronger faster? Do you expect that speed to unlock anything different in the offense this year? It better. I mean, that's what we brought. I mean, like, so 
separation was one thing we wanted to more kind of focus on is getting open, separating. But, I mean, we still got to go learn them. I mean, this is our first time in the spring putting them out there. So just because you're faster, our job is to get them to play faster. So that starts with understanding and confidence because this is the first time some of these guys will see these signals. So as fast as you are, if you're doing something for the first time and not confident in it, you're still a slow player. So what we got to do is build confidence throughout the work so we get to see the speed on the field. You can't just say go run, you know what I mean? We got to make sure they understand the depth, understand the alignments, understand the why. So that's what the screen is about. But yes, it, it does help and create it because, I mean, you saw it with Trey Benson. Saw it with Jakai. I mean, we, we've had speed, but I don't think if we had this amount of people who can run like they can. Do you expect to have all your guys available throughout spring? Absolutely. I think the only guy that's not going to go through spring, I think, is Rob Scott, which is still a possibility he'll go through. Everybody else will roll. And then Jalen Early, I mean, year three for him, the mm -hmm. pivotal year for everybody, but just yeah. how, how much in the mix is Jalen to, to be a. All the way. You know, and not in this day and time, like in time college football, if you're not, they leave. So. By them being here shows you that they have confidence in what's been built, what they had, what they had on the depth chart, and their chances to play. What have you seen from DJ? You mentioned like relationship building up mm -hmm. and for quarterback who might be the starter, only has eight months here on campus. Like what have you seen from him from that buy in and making himself available to the humbleness. I mean, I think he leads by with his a humble approach to it. Like you wouldn't even know he was in the room. I mean, but you can see him behind the scenes encouraging players, starting to build those relationships from the ground up because, I mean, this is a guy that's won a lot of good football games, you know, and, and competed for a conference championship last year and played one of his best years. And when he walks in the room, he just looks like a walk-on quarterback. Like he's like, man, I'm just here to learn, prepare, and build relationships. So I think his leading deal is his humbleness, willing to learn, and just – and just consistency. Um, so it'd be interesting to see once we get out on the grass. Were those traits, when you guys were recruiting him, was that stuff that was obvious? Absolutely. I mean, there's always a sense of a guy that wants to be here and wants to be a part of it that kind of takes an evident like, proudness over it. But he still had to go through his process. We went through ours. But at the end of the day, both parties wanted to be with each other. So we're just making it happen. One of the talking points was the retention of staff. Uh, like maybe five teams in the country that retain all of their assistant coaching staff this season. I uh, just, I guess, what kind of impact does that have on you as the offensive coordinator? Be able to work with Ron and work with Chris every single year, get an idea for the type of bodies they like, how they, how they like to run their position groups. So just how much does that help you? More comfort and strain because this can go two ways. You can get complacent because you know each other, you know how you operate. But if you've truly been working together and building a relationship, now you can strain each other even more because we know, without a shadow of a doubt, we got each other's back. So now you can have even more uncomfortable conversations, even more pushing because we understand what approach we need to take and we understand our true relationship off the field, just like players. So you can say it's an advantage because it's all the same, but it also can be a disadvantage if we're not still pushing each other, making sure we're on point challenging more to be better and all that kind of stuff and that's coach norvell's approach so i think us being together helps because our the true relationship help us push each other further like hey we're watching this cut up and hey, that's not good enough you know hey we're watching short yardage that ain't good enough like oh hey that's my fault i left the tight end or to call things out and not just ignore because of fear of relationship breaking where now nah, we know what it is so let's let's go get better